Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be Harry Muppet. We are going to be casting a diamond level game here up the top right side of the map. We do have our red Terran player, Guista. 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 That sounds about right. And down the bottom left side, we do have our blue Protoss player, the Pizident. Now, he's, uh, he's a player that we've seen once before in a previous game. Uh, it's I believe it's called Farewell Larry. You should go and watch it out because it was a pretty good game. And yeah, it was actually uh, it was quite a game, I can tell you that. But there you go, you should definitely go back and watch it. But we are going to be watching the second game of the Pizident. And he, uh, yeah, we'll see how he goes in this game. He did pretty well in the last game, so we're going to see how he does in this game. And there we go. Early supply depot coming down. Not much to talk about. I like talking about this gap. Not only because there's nothing else to talk about at the start of the game, but also because I just like the way this sort of juts out. If you get a few buildings in there, you can really sort of um, close this off. And it's nice because you can get a big army. Like I've seen siege tanks put on this side. And this is really good because it's very hard for the army to go in there and try and hit them when they're down in this area. They're sort of protected by this rock wall sort of thing, but of course, it does work both ways. So there we go. Well, we've got some tech down in the corner. I'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish with that. He's trying to make him believe that he's going for a sort of rush, maybe? But he is going to... He's He almost went down there and saw it. He is going to see it, though, when he goes around the side. He's got to be a little bit scared at the moment, but he will breathe a sigh of relief when he sees it over here. There he goes. He sees the gateway, so he's worried no longer, and he can expect a, uh, I guess, a normal sort of game going on from here. There we go. This probe's still being chased. The SCV constantly going after him. He must be worried by some sort of a war pin or maybe a cannon rush. And he was, you know, he was right, right to be worried for a little bit there because he couldn't see any of the buildings. But now he sees them. He knows it's standard tech. He's just going to get out of there and be happy with his lot. He's done a good job at scouting. Now, not much going on. We have a gateway and a cyber core. Pretty standard. He's not getting a pylon. This this is a bit of a slip up here. He's not getting that third pylon he needs. He is um is he should be right, but he is going to have about three or four seconds where he can't build a probe there because he doesn't have the uh, supply yet. So that's going to be yeah. It's not going to be very good, but what can you do? There we go. He's chucking down an NG bay there, half building it. That is just going to be to piss off the Protoss player so he can't expand nice and early. But he's not expanding yet either, so it's, uh, I don't know, it's not going to be too much of a hassle. And he would be, and he all has also, will have the uh, scouting information on there so he can see when the Protoss player is about to expand by betting this building is destroyed, because obviously he's not going to destroy it until he needs to build an expansion. So that'll give him a good idea of the Protoss's expansion timing and leaving it half built. He'll also be able to get most of his minerals back. So he's buying a 100% scouting on his opponent's expansion timing for, I don't know, like 20 minerals, 30 minerals, something like that. So it's definitely, definitely a pretty good idea. Unfortunately, he is not going to be able to see his opponent's expansion timing whatsoever because of course he can't get by there but he's got to assume it's coming out soon here comes the stalker he's going to wipe this out as soon as possible the terran play keeping an eye on it he wants to be able to uh cancel that as soon as it gets down low enough probably as soon as it gets on fire you can see it's actually shown with no progress there this ng bay so very interesting there we go 94 I think it costs 125 to build, so yeah, about 30 minerals lost. It's definitely a very good deal. So what do we got going on down here? He's building the buildings over there. He's really trying to discourage the uh, scouting abilities of the turn player. He knows he's got scan. He knows he's probably going to scan over there. So he's probably going to miss the Robo Bay. But we'll see exactly how this goes. Robo Bay is not exactly secret tech. If he was going for a Dark Shrine, Templar Archives, hiding him in the corner, absolutely necessary absolutely a great idea robo facility though i mean it's not anything that's really going to scare the pants off the terran player if he knows it's coming it's uh it's fairly 
fairly safe to assume that the Protoss player would be building that at some point. Although, what have we got here? This would be a um, Robo Facility, I'm guessing? No, Twilight Council? Yeah, I don't know. I do not know. Oh, well, he's having fun building him over there. This bunker is having fun killing probes, so that's going to be good. Looks like he might be able to try and build a supply depot wall in front of the bunkers. So that's definitely not a bad idea. And there he goes. You can see this thing actually sort of sprawling out in front of the command center just after it lands, so that's pretty sweet. I didn't know they did that. But there we go. Uh, interesting idea. You know what I reckon would be a great idea? If a supply drop on a supply depot increased, increased the health. So you drop a supply drop, drop on a supply depot, it like doubles the health or something like that. I, oh, excuse me. I think that would be an absolutely excellent idea. Just a little bit of tweaking to make this otherwise 99% useless ability actually, you know, it has some extra uses. I probably won't send an email to Blizzard because I'm far too lazy, but if anybody else watches this video, feel free to take credit. Well, don't actually, don't, don't take credit. But send the idea in and mention my name and if you want if you feel the need to say how awesome I am then uh, by all means please do but yeah I reckon it would be a great idea supply drop does something for the barracks maybe just increases the armor may, but you know definitely definitely should increase the health I mean make it a little more more beefy or something like that yeah it'd, uh, it'd be pretty awesome God, I'm, I'm already starting to yawn I got to get this video done with as much professionalism as I can. I actually tried to cast a Grandmasters game last night. Cast it too late, yawning too much, and I just said, you know what, screw it. This is this is a fairly good game. And it, is, it was an alright game. I think it lasted like five minutes or something. So, there you go. But, yawning, I'm going to try and cut back on that. So, I'm going to try and cast games a bit earlier. Of course, it's like 10 to 9 at the moment. So, I've failed tonight. But, the other nights, try and cast them a bit earlier. Here we go, Dark Shrine. Ironically, he's not building that in the corner. He's building that right there. So that's very interesting. He's got a warp prism coming out. Maybe that's why he was hiding the robo, because he didn't want him to know that he was building a warp prism. But there we go. This guy going to fly out. There's a nice bit of cover over there. He'll get in some DTs. And I'm not sure how long the DTs will last, because of course the Terran player does have scan. It all comes down to whether he uses his scans to say, actually it doesn't even matter because he's got bloody missile turrets already. He's got one there. He's got two up there. They could probably hit some buildings, but I mean they could hit buildings forever and it's not too much of a hassle. There we go. Brilliantly placed observer. Going to see the Medivax. Here comes the army out. Going to be able to take out these guys without too many problems due to an excellently placed observer. They're going to lose a few units. Terran player tries to save it. Ah, oh, the last shot from the Nexus nearly took out that medevac. Not quite though. Here he goes, the warp prism. He's going very far out. Very far out. I, I would have thought he would have gone in here. Maybe, uh, maybe he was scared. Maybe he thought the Terran had that perfectly scouted, but... No, oh, I see. He's just warping them in. He's going to load them in. And then he's going to jump down on the cliff. Have four already there. Warp in a couple more. So this is an excellent plan from the Protoss player. And we'll see exactly how much damage these guys do. There's not many ground forces up here. So they should be able to do quite a bit. He's looking around. He sees, alright, no buildings. Good stuff, good stuff. Might be able to get away with this. Here we go. Let's look at the Terran player's cam now. I want to see exactly what he sees. Come on. Are we seeing this? Or other damn things. They haven't started moving out yet. Alright. Alright, look. Keep your eyes peeled, okay? We're going to pretend to be the Terran player here. You guys, look for the swishy things on the ground. I want to see them when they come out. He's sending out a bunch more medevacs over there. We're not going to move. We're just going to keep looking at these guys. There we go. One zealot. Oh, they're getting range of the missile tone. So, of course, they're going to see him. There he goes, one second, two second, he's starting to move away, he lost probably about six or seven. Missile turrets are going to go down. This guy has got lots of energy, he's lifting up the command center, that's a very, uh, very interesting tactic. Where is his army? He doesn't have any army, they're all in the medevacs, they're all running around here. This is actually quite a decent army. Well, the Colossus comes out in the nick of time, and I mean absolutely in the nick of time, man. 
That Colossus just saved the entire base, I think. Although they're still running around. I don't know exactly what they're going to do. There we go. We're going to go back in here. It says the buildings. The Terran is uh, not multitasking as well as he could be. He's worried too much about his army, trying to keep him alive over here. And he's got no APM left to deal with these Dark Templar. And they've taken out a lot of stuff here. So what's he going to do? He's trying to move his army back in there. He's got a couple of medevacs there, still with some units in them. These guys go in, he's got the scan down. He's going to take out these Dark Templars. And meanwhile, his army is moving in here. So I take it back. His multitasking is not as bad as I thought it was. And he's going to move in there. And, oh, just uh, taking it. I think they've got a pile on there, and that's about it. So that's uh, not too much to lose. Meanwhile, if we have a look at the income tab, Terran players are good 11 workers behind now. So, yes, he did lose about, I'd say, 10 workers there. Maybe a little bit less. But a very, very nice attack from the Protoss player. The Protoss player, of course, he was in a lot of trouble down here. But the Colossus came out as, at the perfect time and the force fields were really nice. So he managed to hold it off, even though, in my opinion, the Terran player did have a more impressive army. And here we go. These guys are going to run in. He doesn't have an army over here. He does have a lot of workers, though. He doesn't have a missile turret. But, of course, without an army, it's not going to matter. There we go. Go on, guys. Here we go. These are the forces coming. We're just going to see the scan any second now. There we go. There's the scan. That's it. He's going to run. He's outside the range of the scan. He's just going to say, there's another scan. So, if anything, those Dark Templar cost the Terran player two scans. And that's two mules that they could have put down. So... Not, not a huge amount. I don't know if it uh, made up for the uh, for the cost of the Dark Templars. I'd like to think it hadn't, because of course mules. I mean, they're just collecting minerals. But Dark Templar, man, they cost gas. They cost quite a bit of gas. So yeah, I'm not going to say that was worth it. They probably got a couple of workers, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I do not know. But the Protoss player continuing to chuff out the Colossus. He's still working off one Robo Bay, I think. I would not mind at all. See him get a second one. There is the second one coming down. So you're going to start getting them off two things. There we go. It's Widow Mine going in there for a bit of a scout. He sees the army here. He thinks he's got a chance. He's got two Vikings ready to take out the Colossus. And he's got a fairly scary ground army. And without the Colossus, I'm not sure these guys can actually survive this ground army. Because this ground army is quite scary. they got one one. Protoss has no upgrades, so I think I think the Pizanent is in a bit of trouble. He's got 1-1 one, one on the way, but I don't think it's going to be in time if the Terran player makes his move. There's another two Vikings, so the Colossus are going to be in a hell of a lot of trouble. Do not push out. Stay with, back with the cannons. There you go. He's going to try and take out the Vikings. The Vikings just taking pot shots at the Colossus. They got it down to half health already. Protoss is... I don't know exactly what he's thinking. Maybe he's trying to retreat. He's just moving around a little bit. He's got some drop ships. He's going to try for a distraction down around the main base. I'm not sure if he's going to move in with this force while the distraction's coming down. But the uh, medevacs intercept the warp prism. The warp prism intercepts the medevacs. They've got no choice but really to chase this guy because they know the Dark Templars are on the field. They're going to drop down in front of it, try and take it out. And there we go, nice stim going in there. The Protoss player is going to take advantage. This is an awesome timing attack. Going in there when half the army was going off, chasing down the medevacs. The Stalkers here, they're going to try and take out the Vikings. But they've got a very good position. A couple more Vikings come in. The Stalkers have got to start taking these Vikings out. The Vikings have such a good position though, on top of those cliffs. The Protoss player is just going to get out of there. He lost one of his Colossus. And his Grand Army was superior at that moment, but losing the Colossus made him rethink his position. He moved back, and I cannot blame him for that decision. I think that was probably a fairly good decision at that present time, because obviously Colossus are very expensive. But there we go. His Observer still in this one spot. The Terran has not realized that it's there. The Medivac is going to come in. They're going to go out straight away. I think he killed one Medivac. So there we go. A good play by the Protoss player. The Terran player has got to realize there's an observer here. I mean, he hasn't realized it yet. But he really needs to start thinking about it. He's continuing to push the Colossus production. He's got a ton of minerals. And, yeah, but he's, his ground army is getting very... He's getting pretty good. The Stalker numbers. What has the Terran got? The Terran's got 1-1 one, one still. 
He's not going for 2-2 two, two upgrades yet, so... I'm not sure what this guy is going for. He expected an attack, maybe, from the Medivax. But there was not, none coming. And that may have been just a bit of paranoia going back to his main base. But it does cost him. He's going to have to go in there. Get the flank. Where are the Vikings? There, they're on the other side of the army. There we go. These guys aren't going to attack. They're just going to run. They've taken far too many stims. And they do not want to get in range of those Colossus. So they're going to do a bit of an attack. They took out the Nexus, that was their main job. The Medivac's going to come in while the Protoss player is out there. The Protoss, meanwhile, get looking around the middle, trying to get those Medivacs, but they know exactly where the Medivacs are now. And this army is too much for a couple of Stalkers to just warp in and take them out. So he needs the main army back here. And the Terran player is doing some fantastic pressure so far in this game. He's really done a good job with the Medivacs. He's really done a good job with his main army. And the Protoss player has got to feel frustrated at this point. And man, he is going to be supply capped so hard. He's taking so long for his army to get in there. I'm not sure why he's taking so long. He's obviously, he's trying to organize a defense there at the same time. But every second he leaves it, it's just costing him. And there we go. I don't think he's going to let this army get wiped out. He's going to sprint out of there. Only two Marauders survived though. So the Protoss player did manage to kill off the other two Medivacs. But he knows when to push, man. He knows the Protoss player is down there. So he's going to push in. And the Protoss, meanwhile, he has a fairly good idea of what the Terran player is doing. He's going to move up here. He's going to try and do a flank. He must know the Terran army is in there. But this is a bad idea. He does not have the forces. His army is still trying to get over there. And the Terran is choosing not to push in. They do really don't have much choice, actually, because of all these force fields. But there we go. There's... Vikings getting in a bad spot there. The Stalker's close enough to move in. And with the Vikings getting taken out, the Colossus really allowed to do the maximum amount of damage that they're capable of. And the Terran player, man, he just got whittled massively. Really massively down there. A couple of Marauders, they just got dropped off there. I don't know, maybe they're looking for that Observer, but who knows. Vikings now being sniped very effectively by the Stalkers. We see that we don't have Blink Out yet for the Stalkers, but <coughs> I would not be surprised to see that coming out fairly soon. I mean, the Protoss player, he's got a lot of gas at the moment. Actually, he really needs to work on his ground army. He's got a lot of ground army, but with this many murals and with 50 supplies still to go, I would have thought he'd be building, there we go, seven Zealots coming out. Has he got Zealot legs? He does not have Zealot legs. He really needs to get there's Twilight Council upgrades going on. I suppose he thinks he's in a good position at the moment, but you've never won the game until you've won the game, and I would really like to see him get those Twilight Council upgrades going on. But here we go. They've got a push in there. Meanwhile, they've got another force coming in here. These are the Zealots. They are so slow without legs. And, oh man, they've made it through that maze, only to be one hitting a Marauder instead of five hitting it. So there we go. He's still going to make it through. He's still going to do a lot of damage. And I do not think that Guista is going to be in this game for much longer. There we go. So we see the GG there from Guista. And, I mean, good job to him. Good job to the Pizzanet even more for winning that game. And, all right. All right, let's have a look at this game. Let's do the uh, analytical thing here. First of all, Stalkers and Colossus. Fantastic combination. Always been a fantastic combination. Always will be. Um... Usually, when you're going against like a Zerg player or a Protoss player, you want to have Zealots to counter the other Zealots. Because Zealots, if they have speed, they get up close to the Stalkers, they can do quite a bit of damage. And they're fast with legs. With Marine Marauder Force, you don't need to worry about that too much. And Zealots are good, still, but they're not necessary to block off Lings, they're not necessary to, necessary to block off Zealots. So, you can get away with just Stalkers. That's fine. Colossus push as well. Always good versus Marine Marauder. And the Terran player really didn't have any mech in play. He only had the Vikings, which was an expected counter for the Colossus. And, of course, the Stalkers do a very good job versus Vikings. So, there we go. Brilliant play by the Protoss player. He did a good build. He got all his counters right. He got his play right. There we go. Terran player, man. He did a good build as well. Marine, Marauder, Viking. He did very well. Um, yeah. He did some very good snipes with the Vikings. He was really just caught out of position here. The amount of force fields that got laid down forced his army to get out there. And the Vikings were just in a bad position. 
they were going in for the Colossus, but they were too close. When you get into the, uh, when you go into the Colossus, you've got to have a very good flanking position. Now, he was not flanking, he was going head on, and I am going to try and move back to that spot, and we are going to go in there, a little bit more detail so I can explain exactly what I mean. There's about here. There we go. We'll speed this up a little bit. He's still got, the Terran player still got his good army there. Protoss player moves back, wipes out the force of his base. There we go, we're going to slow it down quite a lot. We'll see these guys, he's got five Vikings there, he's got his main army down here. He's moving out now, so this is good, the Observer, beautiful timing, these guys come in. Got the Colossus there, got the forces in front of it. So make note, you've got the Colossus back here, you've got this army over here. Now the Vikings, they've got to take out the Colossus. They go in straight up. So they have the Stalkers here. They're pushing in towards the Stalker forces. What you really need to do is you need to hit this force sideways. I can't really say what a good approach would have been at that point. Maybe from these cliffs up there, but even so, the Colossus were constantly moving forward. That was a bad position all around. The Stalkers are in a big group here. The Colossus start off here. They moved in a little bit. They were surrounded by Stalkers at all sides. So it was a bad, bad place for the, uh, for the Vikings to have that attack. The only thing I could have said was that they might have come in over the top of the Marines and the Marauders and shot at the Colossus like that. That would have been fairly good because of course the Stalkers in the good position to kill the Vikings would have been um, all attacking the Marines and the Marauders. So the Stalkers would have been distracted by the Marines and Marauders. The Vikings might have had a bit more time to shoot it out. But of course the, um, the golden rule um, for this Vikings is you want to have at the absolute minimum you want to have two Vikings for Colossus. A one Viking can take down a Colossus in, you know, a decent amount of time, but you do not want a decent amount of time. In a decent amount of time, the Colossus will wipe out your entire Triple M army. You want those Colossus to go down like a ton of bricks thrown out a window, man. That is how fast you want them to go down. So you want, at the very least, you want two Vikings per Colossus, and if possible, even more. Like for this, I would say, for a group of three Colossus going in there, I would have liked to seen something like eight or nine Vikings going in there just to really make it stick, just to really take it out. And the thing as well with this battle over here, the force fields, they were keeping the Marine Rotor Force back all the way over here. So when the Vikings came over, they were all on basically on top of the force fields almost. So they were closer to the Stalkers than the Marines and the Marauders. And that really hit the Vikings hard because the Vikings, the advantage they have is their range. So usually they're even further back than the Marines and the Marauders in their army. So the Stalkers, the Marines and Marauders are always closer to the Stalkers, and the Stalkers always hit them first, but the Vikings can still hit the Colossus, even when the Colossus are a little bit back, because the Vikings have such an awesome range. With the Force Fields pushing the Marines and Marauders back, and let's, I'm just going to go back once more, just so I can explain it. But there we go. I mean, at this point, this was, this was basically just horrible. I mean, he was moving the Vikings in over the force fields and the army was already running away. So these Vikings should never been ever anywhere near this battle. But there we go. You always try and keep them unless you can get a nice flank that he's not expecting. Like if he was going down this thing and for, say, for example, he was trying to protect the Colossus. So he had the Stalkers like this facing the army and he put the Colossus a little bit out to the side straight up from down here you send the vikings in they can almost hit it from on top of this cliff that's a beautiful flank otherwise vikings straight above the army the stalkers have a higher chance of hitting these marines rather than hitting the vikings this this flank in here with all the stalkers around this area not a, it wasn't really even a flank it was half into the main army but there we go i think i've done enough talking about uh viker positioning micro and i think you guys probably got the gist of that so there we go some very important tips on attacking a Colossus force when you have Vikings. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching this, guys. I hope you enjoyed this diamond level game between these two very diamondy level players. This has been Harry Muppet. I'll see you guys next time.